So a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting right here telling you about all the great features you can expect to see on the new Makara Carvera Air CNC machine. I promised a follow up video, so here we are. But before we get into that, let me address some of the backlash I got around my Kickstarter comments. They were 100% correct. There is no guarantees when you are investing in Kickstarter campaigns. However, the reason I was speaking so confidently about it is because Makera have done this before with their previous machine. They delivered a successful campaign and thousands of these machines are now in use all around the world. So yes, it is at your own risk in investing, but ultimately the history of the company gives you some confidence that they are going to successfully deliver again. So let's move on. So back to the Carvera Air. Now this has a few features that I've never used before, such as tool offsetting and auto probing, ultimately to make your life easier whenever you are changing bits over and working with uneven surfaces. Now, I wanted to understand how all of this works and the joys of the Carvera Air is they provide you a suite of example projects to get you started. One is the fourth axis that you can see behind me and there is also a few others such as building that LED light over on the side. Now, before I talk about that, the guide that comes with it literally hand holds you through every single step of the process. It really does make it so easy to achieve. Now, with the LED light, this consists of essentially four separate projects. You machine the PCB and there is also a separate kit if you want to do the UV um, soldering mask on top of that as well. But ultimately, that is the first time I've ever machined a PCB and it went really smooth. Next is machining the base out of the ABS and when that's done, they even provide you the tools to cut all of the little tabs off. They really have thought of so many things as part of this project. You can machine the button for the side of it to turn the lamp on and off and ultimately machine the clear acrylic to get the light obviously to pass through for the design itself. They even provide you with multiple designs in case you don't like the one that I've picked, you can simply select another one. So to be able to build an entire project on a brand new machine without having to worry about anything, it really is a great way to get you introduced to this machine. And similarly with the laser, they also provide you with a sample project to that, again where you can interchange it with the probe in case you're working on material that is not perfectly flat. So at this point, I now have a better understanding of the machine, how the various aspects work, when to change the bits over, that sort of thing. So it was time to jump onto my PC and start designing a project to machine out. Now, Carvera Air does have its own CAM software. However, given time constraints, I simply use Carvco Maker because that's what I'm familiar with to get the jobs done and out quickly. Now, if you're fairly new to CNC, software needs what is known as a post processor, which is essentially to tell it how to talk to the specific machine. And they are available for the most popular pieces of software such as Carvco, Vectric and Fusion. Now I could have gone in simple with some basic tests but that's not me so I dive straight in with a 3D relief carving. Now the entire job took around four hours because I was using a tiny bit in order to do the finishing pass and even though this was pine the results came out great. This was my first job really in using all the different features of changing bits over, auto probing on my own back without using the sample projects and it came out great. Just reinforcing the the multiple features it has to make your life easier actually become quite easy to get used to and know when to change things over and it literally tells you on screen as well. So I moved on to doing some test cuts in aluminium because I know a lot of you are looking at this machine for metalwork. Now it's not an area of expertise for me. I just kind of hope for the best for my feeds and speeds and learn along the way. But all the tests that I was pouring it through, they were cutting great. I was getting a bit faster each time, going a little bit deeper just to see how the results did vary. Now I know there were some concerns about this being just a 200 watt spindle, but in actual fact, a 200 watt closed loop spindle is cutting through the aluminium absolutely fine. It's not going to be hogging it out like a massive spindle wood but that is not the purpose of this machine as i said previously this is about precision now talking about precision that segues me nice into the next job that i did which was cutting a part out of carbon fiber now i have never cut carbon fiber in my life i didn't even google any speeds and feeds this video is really highlighting just how much I wing projects sometimes, but ultimately it was a successful job and it cut the carbon fiber out really nice. Now, when I was talking about precision, I set the thickness of this to cut just 0.1 millimeters deeper than the material itself. 
and you can see from the video on screen that it cut the carbon fiber out but it hardly damaged the blue tape underneath literally both layers of blue tape were still there so it just goes to show the precision that you can expect from this machine straight out of the box but i should highlight it is a dangerous material to machine it's usually done in a water bed to stop any of the bits and debris going anywhere but at least if you're going to do it make sure you have a dust chute and a good vacuum set up with a filter system because you don't want none of the particles of this going in the air breathing and going in your eyes so yeah do be careful when machining carbon fiber now after that another metal that i've never worked with before on a cnc machine was a plate of copper had an idea to do a nice engraving on this the original intention was to put some sort of ink over the top of it and then wash it off to leave it all in the groove but actually i really enjoyed the way that it came out just leaving it as the natural copper i needed to give it a little bit of a polish up to get rid of some of the marks on it but it actually came out really nice and then I wanted to move on and test their fourth axis rotary device. Now I didn't have time to generate my own project for this so I did just use their sample project which as I say I have left behind me that you can see there. But the detail in that is amazing and I'm really looking forward to generating my own project that I can run on that. Now up until this point everything I've spoken about has been really positive but there are a few things that need to be looked at and addressed with this machine and its software. Let's start with the software because it kind of relates to the copper plate that I was just talking about. Now this machine has what is an auto level feature which is basically where it probes multiple points on your material in order to check how level it actually is now the problem is if you're trying to work edge to edge on metal and using clamps to hold it down there is no way to bring those probe points in slightly from the edge of the material so that is one thing that they do need to look at because ultimately it either means that you can't use clamps to hold your material down or you can't work to the edge of your material. So it is one thing that I would like to see adjusting. Sticking with their control software, there are some compatibility bugs. Now I tested this on five different devices, two phones, a tablet, a laptop, and a PC. And out of all five, I could only get jobs to run successfully on three of those devices. So it is one thing that they need to work on. They are aware of it and are already developing fixes for it. So hopefully by the time this is released, those will all be sorted out. Now the lid for the enclosure, whilst it does the job, it is a bit wobbly and a little bit flimsy. Now I'm not going to dwell on this too much because they have already said that they are addressing this after the Kickstarter. So the versions that you receive should have a much better lid on them. I'm hoping it's got some sort of um, gas lift hinges on it as well. So I do hate the fact that it's got no type of soft close and it sort of just drops down. Now the machine itself looks really slick overall, but there are a few 3D printed parts that ultimately, well, they kind of ruin the aesthetics of the machine. Now the parts do the job that they are expected, which is essentially to hold the hose in place, the dust chute itself, and a couple of parts on the probe on the side of the spindle. So it's like they do the job, but I think if they either produce better 3D printed parts or make them in some other way, it will just really make this machine look 100% slick. Now there are a few things that Make Air have done with this machine really making your life easier. And I'm not talking about the big expensive hardware, I'm talking about little things that they have thought of that really make it much smoother. For example, the bed on the machine has lots of threaded insert holes to make clamping things down so much smoother. You're not trying to make a clamp reach the material, there's lots of different options to guarantee it is held down very well. They also have what are called fixed anchor positions, so your machine always knows that your material will be in a certain corner of the bed whenever it is in position again making things much faster and much easier the fourth axis for example is on locator pins so it always sits in exactly the same position and the machine also knows when it is in position and connected to it the bolts and things that they provide for all the clamps are in different lengths again to accommodate the different thicknesses of material now all of the clamping stuff comes as part of their toolkit which also contains a few extra things again to make your life easier so they start off by providing you with a range of bits to use on the machine obviously to do all of their example projects now the thing with this machine and the quick change system is it has to have a little collar on the bit so it knows the correct depth to insert and that's obviously great because all the bits they provide you have those collars but what if you want to use your own cnc bits well they also provide you the tool to do that as well it's kind of like a threaded insert mechanism and you could put your own tool in there a collar in there and this mechanism just clamps that collar to your bit and it can also be used to take the collar back 
back off should you want to use it on another CNC machine, for example. Now, the joys of that as well is it doesn't just accommodate one eighth bits that we've been seeing so far, it will also accommodate four mil, six mil, and quarter inch bits. So, say so they're just little things, not necessarily expensive stuff, but it just makes your life much easier when running this machine and doing various projects. And one final thing I just wanted to mention the back panel on the machine actually removes. So, you can put larger pieces of material through it, almost pass your material through the machine in order to achieve bigger jobs. Your work area is still only the same, but you can do it in multiple sections on the same piece of material to get a larger project at the end of it. So that is where I am up to. By no means a full review, as I said earlier, but I wanted to give you an update before the Kickstarter campaign ends. Now, I think other than the compatibility issues with the control software, I really have no doubts about this machine itself. It has run every job successfully. It's been very simple to get to grips with, even with all the extra advantages advanced features and I'm still as excited about this machine now as I was when I first got it. Now I will continue to do updates and things on social media about this machine so if you do have any questions or you want me to test anything make sure you're following me and let me know your questions in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them as I say and post any videos or updates as time goes on. So thank you all very much for watching I do hope you found the video useful give it a thumbs up if you did and final thanks as always goes to my patrons. I will see you all on the next episode.